If your Google searching has landed you here, hopefully this video is going to help you. Um, if you're working on a BMW straight six, uh, you know, I don't know all the vintages, but this is the E46 99 through 05 or whatever. I'm going to assume the M54 engines, all of them are pr probably similar, and the other variants of. Um, so I've got the intake off. I had to pull it for a failed uh, PCV system or oil separator system or whatever you call it. I'll show you what I think I know about how that system goes back together. Uh, and then the vacuum hoses and stuff. So starting here in the engine bay, you have this vacuum hose here, uh, which is going to connect into the back of the manifold. There's a port on there. I'll show you where it is. Uh, this, this tube. I uh, just replaced it. Goes on to this harder plastic line here. Um, then you have uh, what am I looking for here? This one here. This is going to go on the back of the manifold. Also, got to put this on before we get the manifold in place. Um, this one here is going to go up. I think this goes into the F fitting on top of the. Uh, the upper air plenum. I'll show you that in a second. The tricky stuff here for me was the the PCV system pipes and then oh and then because these vacuum lines kept breaking before I could even see where they were going. So on the end of this canister there's a vacuum line here that's going to go onto our manifold and then there's also another vacuum line on the back of it. It comes up to this fitting right here. Okay, and I replaced this rubber tube also. I've been using 530 seconds uh, vacuum tube. Got this from O'Reilly's. I think it was like four and a half bucks or something. And uh, just cutting it to length. It works great so far. Over here on the intake, you have uh, one where this comes out of the back of, uh, or I guess. I don't know, what do you want to say, back, front, side, or whatever, of that, it curls right around to the bottom port over here on the intake manifold. This one here that's still open, this is the one that goes on to the, the front of that canister that I just showed you. Um, and this, this one here is the one that goes to that very first tube I showed you, that one, this guy right here. Okay, this bigger one should have a cap on it, which I've got the old one around here somewhere, uh, is definitely going to be in need of replacement. I'll show you where it is. Okay, so this should be capped off. You can see this is cracked and just, uh, I've got to do something here. Sometimes you can restore these, like throw a little RTV around them or something, but I don't know if that one's going to make it. Uh, but that should be capped off. Um, then your CCV, PCV system, this should be capped off on it. This is the, I don't know, the warm weather version. Uh, and on this, this has got to be capped off. I took this off the old one. This is the new valve, of course. And then the, the hose is on here. So there's, there's this one here I've already installed down onto the valve right here is the front of that. Okay, and then it snakes up through here. And the other end of that goes on to that guy right there. That one is like your inner manifold connection here. So you've got another tube and that's gonna go on that side there and then it's going to snap in on that there. Now you're getting down to the nitty gritty. Then, okay, on the downside here, on your dipstick tube, where the oil from this whole system drains back down into the, the dipstick tube, down into the pan, uh, that just slides on there. There's no clamp. This is going to go on to the bottom of this, and then you have one more pipe that comes up here. And it wraps around 
to the top of the engine and onto this. And that pipe is somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, but you get the idea. Although I would like to know what happened to that. I don't know, whatever, it's around. Oh, here it is. Uh, I think this is pretty much the orientation of that when you get it in. I don't know. Maybe it's the other way. I don't know. Whatever. It's This this one goes here, okay? And it's going to make itself obvious how it connects. <clears throat> and I think that's pretty much that. You know, you've got this which this goes on to the, the F connector also. I'll show you the F connector I'm talking about. It goes on the upper air plenum tube thingamajigger here. This guy, as this thing sits in the engine, something similar to this. This tube here, the big one goes in the top of it, and then the small one is connected through a piece of, or should be, through a piece of rubber, rubber tube to, uh, I think it's this. That rubber tube, like I said, all the all the rubber tubing on here just it, it disintegrated uh, when you touched it. And as I was removing the manifold, not having done this particular job before, like tubes are breaking, but I couldn't even see them. I didn't know where they're going. Trying to chase all this stuff down and figure it out is is kind of a pain. And you've got like you know the emissions diagram up here, but that's a joke because there's no detail on it. If you already know what you're doing, that might help. But if you're fresh to this, uh, it was no help. So that's that's the vacuum routing and the CCV routing. Um, might help you out a little bit. This here, this one here goes up onto the bottom of um, you know just had that out a little while ago guys and I don't remember oh when you get this all hooked back up when you when you get that on the back of the manifold then this thing mounts on there and then this thing goes up into the bottom of that okay and it's all it doesn't look right now because it's all unhooked of course but you get the idea so that's that if that's what you're looking for you can go back to what you were doing. Uh, you can see there I've got a new starter installed in here. The bolts that mount this thing, uh, the heads face the back of the car. There's one over here, and there's one here, two mount bolts, and then there's, um, well, basically three wire posts. I think this one's a like an eight millimeter bolt. That's a 10 millimeter bolt down here, and this is, a, uh, I don't know, 14 maybe, 12, whatever it is. Um, the hardest part of that starter is getting the bolts out. And what, what I wound up doing was uh, taking a, if I can find it, I'll show you the box here. There it is. Uh, these things, because I didn't have any, let me explain. So the heads of the bolts back mm -hmm. there are Torx heads. And you can probably see that's one of them right there. Okay, that's a Torx head right in the middle of the screen. So the 10 millimeter version of these universal design wrenches by Craftsman, this will fit on here and it's and it's angled. So I was able to get it on here just like so. Okay, and then uh, I was able to break that one loose that way. You've got some room. What I did to kind of cheat around this was I took a 19 millimeter deep well socket and I slid it over the end of this open end part of the wrench and then put a <clears throat> put like a foot extension on that socket to give it like a like a cheater bar so I could get a little extra leverage to get that one broke loose. Then the the bottom bolt over there I got from under the car using every 3 8 extension that I had uh, and I've got another short video on this. Every 3 8 extension I had, and then a half inch to uh, 3 8 adapter, and then my half inch ratchet to give it a little more oomph because I needed it. But this is what I wound up using with a 
an E12 socket and a universal there, and then just about all the extensions I could find. And then from there, you get up under the car, uh, your pack, your back past the transmission and somewhere around the, where the catalytic converter is, and you can get up and get a line right onto that back bolt. Total pain in the neck, but that's how I got it off and got it back in. Uh, there's a, an alignment dowel here that, uh, depending on your situation, may be rusty and it may be holding the starter in place. On this one, it wasn't too bad, even though this was the original starter. This is an 01 and it's 2019, it's 18 years, so uh, I, I didn't have much trouble with it. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? So th there's the fuel rail, which I did not disconnect from the fuel line because I didn't need to. I just laid it out of the way, um, which is what I prefer to do to this stuff unless I have to um, disconnect it. The injectors. Again, this thing had never been off. So when I took all this stuff out, so I left the injectors in the manifold and then pulled that you know the fuel rail off of the injectors and then I took the injectors out and I re resealed them so we got new seals up here on top and down here and when I pulled these out the the holes where the injectors go they were full of crud so I cleaned all that crud out of all of them re-ringed all of them uh, so they should be good for a long time I've got uh, obviously a new intake manifold seal on it and then, uh, you know, the other stuff I showed you, that's the back side of that PCV valve, CCV, whatever. Um, these were the kits I got from Rock Auto to reseal the uh, fuel injectors. The CCV kit I bought, which was pretty nice, is the Techsmart Z16005. Um, this is an oil filter. That's the fuel filter. So uh, this is the second fuel filter I bought for this car. The first one I had just had one input and one output. This car has the fuel filter that has the built-in regulator, which has uh, many outputs and many inputs. So know which one you need before you order. You're going to wind up sending it back and yada, yada, yada. So I think those are the major tips I can give you if you're doing this, you know, outside of knowing that vacuum stuff. Uh, pay attention when you're taking it apart. If it falls apart, try to piece it back together. This, literally what I did was try to piece some of that stuff back together because I, I did not know. I had nothing to go off of. Um, the reason why I'm even doing this is because the car stopped running and it had a massive oil leak for several months. And you can see, uh, of course, this is kind of dried up now, but there was oil just just dr draining down this side of the motor. And it would go down the transmission tunnel, get onto the cat, and just, when the guy drove it, it smelled terrible. One of those pipes, uh, the one that goes down to the dipstick, okay, this one here, on the old, because this is rubber, on the old one, it completely just broke and a section of it was missing. So all the oil coming out of this system was just draining right onto the side of the block and then running down the car. And um, then, you know, the other pipes were disintegrating and it finally had such a massive air leak, the car stopped running. And that's what precipitated all this. I put a new fuel pump in it too, just because everything was original and, you know, it was time. So that's kind of some of the tools. I've used the, definitely the techniques that I've tried, and um, that's where I'm at with it. Pretty sure it's going to run. So if you have any questions, let me know, and good luck.